Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well. Yes, welcome. This is your uh, Yoga Solutions live on this rather chilly November morning, uh, Tuesday, November the 19th, with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. And um, <clears throat> yes, I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. So we have a question from uh, Barbara. Uh, Barbara's been attending my um, live and in-person course up in Scotland. And her question is around standing balances, anything to do with stand, standing balances. Okay. Now, what, what is the problem with balances? I, I, th I think um, for most people, it's going to be the idea of balancing, as in, as in holding yourself together, uh, holding yourself in place as you try and attempt to relax over a standing foot, for example. And uh, what we actually need to do is we need to feel supported. Um, let's get a broader view first. I'll just do a, a straightforward um, standing thing. So, you know, if, uh, if, you, if you think you're going to balance, then generally speaking, you'll put your weight down on a foot and then try and hold yourself in position, which is going to lead to tension. And it's not, it's not a natural way of supporting yourself on one foot. Um, quite often, the, you know, the idea of having to balance leads to this sort of rather um, strange way of, of holding yourself there. Because I ideally what we want is we want to simply feel supported by the way we touch the ground, as you would if you were walking, you know. Every time you take a step, um, there's a balance. It's just we don't spend much time there. Um, the The difference between... Uh, attempting to balance and say being on one foot whilst you're walking is the dynamism of it. It's the it's the fact of engaging through your earth and allowing yourself to move in space. And um, so you know in the process we we of walking we've learned to find ways of feeling supported um, in the journey. And actually it's far more complicated to to move from here to there than it is to find what supports you in one uh, in one position. And um, the, 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 the answer is, it's to do with um, actually what I've been working with you um, up in Scotland, Barbara. Um, it, it's about finding these relationships to our touch. Uh, you know, when, when we, and on the haptic course, by the way, um, so those of you on the haptic, I'll, I'll see you this week, this week, and we can work on this if you like. Um, it's the way we touch the ground and how that contact uh, offers support all the way the deep front line of the body, the, the, um, the viscera, the back against the front of the spine, the chakras, if you like. And it's finding those natural uh, lines of support that means that the spine can rest into the support that is being offered by the touch. So, you no, know, I'm, I'm often talking about just putting a foot down, uh, and and you can do that actively as the heel, with the idea of feeling supported by it. So you activate the foot as if standing on air, and it's actually the heel that's in contact. But the activation of the foot is the thing that um, gives you support back from your touch. So the, the opening of the foot as if standing on a surface will give you um, a sense of support up through the hip. Then the, the outer edge of things, well, we want to feel supported on the inside. And um, if, you're following the haptic if you're following the haptic course, haptic intelligence course, or if, you're, uh, if you work with me at the weekend, um, you might be aware of how the outer edge of things helps release a width across the pelvis that takes the strain off the um, off the sacral lumbar junction, so you don't have to lift your back. You know, quite often, what happens when we take weight forwards is we lift to take the weight off the foot, which uh, doesn't really work. Well, it does, but um, it's not very nice for the spine. So, if you can find a, a sort of a spacious relationship inside the pelvis from 
how the outer edge of the foot comes down, then the ball of the foot coming down will take that support further up and allow you to feel supported in space in the middle. You know? So when we can find these sort of relationships between how the foot goes down and how the uh, the soft stuff of the body at the front uh, can be supported away from the ground on the inside, not lifted by the back, um, then we have somewhere for the spine to rest. Um, actually starting with walking is, is makes it harder because um, you're likely to have arrived in a, in a lifted state anyway. So if we can build this up from the ground, I'll do, I'll do this way around, I think. If we can build it up from the ground, then uh, we get more of a chance of relaxing in the first place. So, you know, and it, you can't find out if you're supported on the inside of the body until you stop holding yourself up with the back of the body, you know? If you're holding yourself up with your spine, uh, there's no reason for um, the uh, the touch and the core responses to be involved in your support. So, th which is that's the main thing that confuses people about um, trying to find these relaxed relationships to earth and contact. Is the contact itself, the relationship itself, is the where the activity is, um, and the responses are strong but they're not done in the same way that they need to be done if you lift, you know, if you hold yourself up. So, what was I saying? Oh yes, looking for relationships. So we're going to take some weight through the front of the foot. Um, I'm fond of saying your foot is this part, the, the paw, the, the heel is less, it's, it's less of a foot really, it's more the place that you rest, like you would if it was your hind leg still. Um, it's a place of rest, but um, we have evolved to use it um, in a different way from any other animal on the planet. But your foot is your foot, it's the touch of the foot, it's the ball of the foot, it's the little toe corner. What we need to find is support for the soft stuff in the front of the body from that touch. And so right at this moment I'm with my the ball of my foot. So. Um, the the inner touch, the sort of in and down feeling, the away from me feeling, the pushing the ground away with the with the front of the foot feeling, um, that gives me something to drape over in the solar plexus, and then when I release, well, when I widen that support to the outer edges of things, then I'll get a sort of a lightness from the same sort of areas, the feeling of the middle of the back feeling supported in a kind of more flattened out state. Um, ideally we need both. So the uh, inner touch of the foot is the basic central support and then as that widens then that the space within can widen as well and we get a sense of resting a little more extended. Um, hard work and particularly hard work for me uh, on this leg and this was the side that I prolapsed the disc. So um, I, I actually have kind of a muscle missing in my calf um, because of nerve damage. But um, nonetheless, the, the, the work, as intense as it, is, as it is for me on this side, the work is in organizing the structure so that it is the touch and the support through the bones that supports me. And when that happens, the core of the body tends to get involved rather than the superficial holding patterns. Anyway, where was I? I think I, I took a little and aside because my leg was tired, but let's carry on. The inner foot wants to support inside the body. The widening from that gives me a bit of space uh, as, as, this, as that inner space widens. And then the heel becomes an additional place of touch as I sort of extend back from the contact to get the heel on the ground as well, not instead of by dropping my weight back, because that collapses your uh, responsive touch. But the addition of the heel is the thing that sort of brings the whole of the body in, into support because you're kind of using that touch to be supported in, in, into the space behind you, which includes the sole of the foot. 
so in a foot out of foot looking for feeling like i can rest over the, those points of touch i'm playing with the solar plexus so i'll get a, a flexion response as i'm with my downward touch i'll start to get more space as i widen and then as the heel extends away from things the whole of the body has to open up to accommodate the expansion of my touch and then the uh, the posture develops not because i'm holding more but because i'm releasing more towards the center of things as i expand out in space the limbs are not a, an additional part of um uh you don't you don't need to add the limbs um, if you know what I mean. It's not like we're balancing and then lifting limbs. Um, what, when we've got this sort of central support feeling from the touch, big toe, little toe, heel, you could do it the other way around, like, like uh, walking. You could start with the heel, find space from the outer touch. And I'm more with my pelvis now. And then as the ball of the foot goes down, find more support from the inside, you know? Uh, it could work like that. Um, it doesn't really matter. As long as you sort of build support up in, a, in this sort of three-part way, then you should gain some benefit. But what I was saying was the, the, the limb coming up isn't something you do on top of the support. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Most people will start by lifting a limb which sort of leaves the job of carrying the limb with the local joint or, or worse, with the spine. Um, the limb coming up needs to be a function of putting the weight down. So basically the limb that is in the air needs to be given to the touch of the ground. And there's a sort of gathered in feeling that gets you to do that. And then when you give to that touch of the ground to feel supported along the front line of the body, then with the release of the breath, it's the spine behind the heart that is the place that is kind of landing through the body to the ground. And then the body expanding out from that means you can rest into space through your own tissue. It feels like a relationship to space. It feels like a, I'm sort of leaning into the space all around my limbs rather than um, lifting the weight of the leg uh, on top of the balance. The opening of the leg away from the central axis is what extends me, you know? As you know, I give the weight of the lifted limb to the touch and as I use my touch, to find support along the front of the body then if i leave this limb bent i have to work too hard whereas if i expand out from the spine then the opening out allows me to sort of feel more relaxed in space same with the arm i don't lift the arm but if i thread through space for my fingers from the releasing spine behind the heart then the i get a sense of floating and threading through space as a result of the release of the breath um so that was a sort of hardcore balance have a little go with standing so the the weight of the limb that's coming up isn't something you lift up because that will pull you down. The weight of the limb, limb coming up, this one, is because it's being put down through the touch. So there's a, a sort of a gathered in feeling like you're picking up with the foot rather than picking the leg up. Yeah? You're picking up with your foot like it's a functional thing. So the weight of the limb that's coming up is given down to the standing foot and the standing foot needs to support 
inside the body. And, it's, and it goes with breathing. You might notice every time I, um, I tend to uh, sigh, every time I engage, you know, um, because you get the core responsiveness a little more with the release of the breath in relationship to touch. So the foot goes down, inner, outer, and heel. And because of it, I'm getting different kinds of support along the front of the spine. Meanwhile, this limb that is being coming up is being given to the standing foot. I'm not adding, lifting this limb, which would pull me down. So little by little, as I empty towards the middle, the spine behind the heart whoops, gets a chance to settle through the body, little by little. And as that happens, I can grow out into space in all directions. And when it's all directions, <laughs> I become lighter. So little by little, I find I develop support up through the middle as I give the anything that's coming off the ground to the ground. And this is all in relationship to the release of the breath. So I'll try a different leg extension. So little by little, as I release back to the center, release back to the heart in fact, and from the heart I release into my touch, so that the heart, spine behind the heart releases forwards. Then from there, breath by breath, I grow in space, threading through space. You can see when I'm flying and you can see when I'm holding against the balance. When I'm flying, there's no, there's no um, sense of needing to balance. When I'm trying to balance, it's because I'm, I'm not in my center. I'm being pulled off in one direction by um, something that I'm doing. And usually it's a reaching away from myself or holding myself in. But if I can keep the expansion from the center, from the heart, universally equal in all directions, then I go nowhere. I get to let go back to my center as I release in space. I, let, I get to let go of the spine so I land on my base, little by little. Okay? That should cover it. Hope that was useful, Barbara. And anyone else that was interested in standing balances? Um, yes. So I uh, uh, just want to say a little something about my online course that's coming up. Um, I'm really excited. I've got, I'm getting a lot of inquiries. Um, I, I think I've, I've um, tapped into something that people are really looking for. The haptic intelligence course is, is really... Um, has been amazing. It's, it's, it's really helped me get very clear about the specifics of relationships between how we engage with our touch, the different qualities of touch, the different directions of, or rather the different ways of supporting ourselves from our touch, and how every part of the body responds to that. And um, yes, it's, it's a must for anyone out there that's um, into body work of any kind, really, because it's a, it's a paradigm. It's a, it's a game changer, really. Is, and um, yeah, it's going amazingly. And um, I've got. I uh, became clear about what the um, what these these series are about. It's it's the same stuff that I normally work with, but I, I'm zeroing in on each of the fundamental conditions that leads to the outcome that we're looking for. The second, the next um, live. An interactive online series I will I will be doing for um, dedicated teachers, body workers, or, or anyone that's um, fully immersed in their yoga journey um, will be the proprioceptive intelligence series. 
and uh, proprioception is about um, knowing where we are in space and uh, my particular thing is around how we relate to space on a physical level um, you know we, we know that we are touching the ground um, but it takes uh, the, the haptic intelligence course takes you into how you're actually relating to that how you're actually engaging with it and, and relating to it um, and it's not dissimilar with space it seems a bit vague for people because you can't directly feel contact but we have this part of our nervous system called proprioception that deals with where we are in space where things are in relationship to each other and um, it, it also it, it's a it's a broader sense than that it also deals with gravity and pressure within joints all that sort of thing it's an important part of our sensory perception and uh, when we are practicing our yoga quite often we are more in the grosser sensory perceptions of of the efforts that we're engaging with and how we're holding ourselves up for example which is um, you know what most people would think of in terms of how to balance um, when we can engage with our space in appropriate ways then there's a whole new level of support that is available and that's what the proprioceptive intelligence course is going to be about um, similar sort of idea as the haptic intelligence in that it's about how we engage with the thing but more specifically how each part of the body uh, responds to that um, so that we can map out confluent patterns of support from the way that we meet space um, it's going to be fantastic uh, i uh, th there's a, a limited number of people that can be online at any one time uh, when I do the live course, but I'm going to open it up because um, uh, if, if you join, um, you will get access to the uh, live course on the, on the night. If 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 you're uh, one of the first twenty or so to to register, um, and even but if you miss it, it doesn't matter. If, you know, if you can't do Thursday evenings, it doesn't matter because. Um, you can catch up on the on the recordings uh, the probably by the end of the day after it takes a while to um, put the tech together but to the the, um, the evening the day after it's, it's usually up along with a bit of a description of what's going on on that particular session and uh, and the, the reason it doesn't make a lot of difference really is because um, I offer half hour one to one sessions with ed every participant, everyone that joins and you get to book that in at, at your convenience, whatever you like. So, um, so yeah, half a dozen, one, six, six of the other, you know. So if, if you want to um, join this, drop me a line. I'm, I'm giving priority of place to those that have already expressed an interest and then um, whatever remaining places for the for the live course there are. I shall I shall make available and uh, what the way this will run it will begin in December there will be a an introductory workshop because it seems to happen every time there's a I seem to need space for an introductory kind of overview workshop where people get the general idea and then six weekly sessions um, going in, into specific details of the content of the of that course. So, um, so that will there will be a introductory session in December, and then I will do the course proper. Um, you you need to do the introductory session. You can't just uh, drop in on the <laughs> in January. But I'll do the course proper in twenty twenty, uh, beginning of it. And if yeah, if you're interested, uh, drop me a line, and get on the list of uh, first refusal, and then I will open it to the public um fairly soon um i'll, I'll offer you I'll, I'll be doing booking links etc this week i think okay uh, apart from that uh, if you want to come and work with me in person um do so <laughs> uh the the next opportunity will be the friday the 22nd in um midhurst which is near guildford uh, I'm doing a late morning workshop there, 11 till 2, and it's hosted by the lovely Louisa Bertwell, who's one, one of my long-term students. On the 23rd, the Saturday um, in November uh, 23rd, there is a, um, a two workshops in Angmering, in a place near Angmering. Um, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. You can book for both and make it a full day, sort of six-hour workshop. Um, or you could do 
one or the other. Um, it's up to you. You're going to discount if you do both. Uh, other than that, there's the uh, Yoga Solutions workshops coming up in Brighton and in Glasgow in December, the uh, 8th of December, Sunday the 8th in Brighton and Saturday the uh, 15th, is it? Yes, or 14th, Saturday the 14th in um, Glasgow, I think, if that's correct. Yes, Saturday the 14th. And um, yes, other than that, um, it's oh you can always come and work with me one to one or my or have a go if you will if you would like um a rather delicious healing or treatment um uh, um come to us we we love working one to one with people it's kind of the way to go i think it's going to be the way forwards with my um training programs so um if if you're interested in um proper proper um advanced teacher development uh i think i'm moving towards doing doing that on a kind of small group very small group or even uh, probably one-to-one -one basis um it's it's the only way to go I, f I feel it's the way yoga is always taught and um i keep veering more and more towards it uh, in terms of you know people that actually really want to be able to share this work um you, you need one-to-one -one help um the um the courses uh, give you the space to take the principles and work it out for yourself. And, um, and you can do that online with the haptic intelligence courses. And um, you, can, you can get that from workshops when you come and work with me with a workshop. You do get hands on with in-person workshops, of course. Um, but um, the, the one to one thing is, is bespoke. It's entirely in response to that person in that moment so it's the it's the proper fast track so anyway uh, and, I, and i can do those on the line as well they they're, they're they're really effective and they proved incredibly effective for the haptic intelligence course so um i expect them to be just as useful for anyone that wants to join the proprioceptive intelligence course okay so i think that'll do from me um i'm mark j aquaviva of the aquaviva school of yoga signing off until same time same place next week lots lots of love to you all Bye now.